Today, we're going to talk about another epic Stark, Cregan Stark, the ruler of Winterfell and Warden of the North during the time of the Dance of the Dragons. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of concrete dates of Cregan's birth, death, or exact years of rule. We do know by all accounts, Cregan Stark was an honorable man, and Prince Aemon the Dragon Knight stated he'd never faced a finer swordsman. Now keep in mind, Aemon the Dragon Knight himself was considered the noblest knight who had ever lived, and his sword skills were legendary throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Even in modern Westeros time, Aemon is seen as a noble figure, and songs and stories are told of him. So if this guy says he's never faced a finer swordsman, that's an endorsement you can trust. So let's talk about what else we know about this epic Stark. Cregan Stark had a long reign as Warden of the North, and during his rule, he employed Maester Kennet, who would serve at Winterfell. During this service, it's assumed Cregan gave the maester permission to study barrow fields, graves, and tombs of the north and send bones to the citadel for assessment. Because of this work, maesters were able to confirm evidence of burials among the giants and estimate the largest of the giants reached 14 feet tall, though some claim 12 feet is more like it. If Cregan truly supported this research or just let his maester do as he pleased, that is unknown. At one point in Cregan's rule, whether that was 5 years or 20 years into his reign as Warden of the North, we don't know, 129 AC came about and the Dance of the Dragons occurred. This Targaryen civil war occurred when King Viserys I Targaryen died and his children, Aegon II and Rhaenyra Targaryen, fought over the throne. Viserys I had declared Rhaenyra was his heir and knights and lords had sworn to uphold this many years ago. However, this went against the president set by the Great Council of 101, and Rhaenyra's half-brother Aegon II, convinced by his mother, took the throne instead. This prompted a war. Rhaenyra Targaryen would send her children to secure loyalties throughout the Seven Kingdoms to fight for her throne. She would send her firstborn son, nicknamed Jace, through her first husband, Lenor Velaryon, to the Eyrie, Sisterton, White Harbor, and Winterfell to win their loyalty. In the north, Jace would convince Lord Cregan Stark to join his mother, Rhaenyra Targaryen. Some believe Cregan Stark and others joined easily because Jace was so charming and his dragon so fearsome. But Lord Cregan most likely was swayed at first by the fact that his king, Viserys I, had issued a command to place Rhaenyra, not Aegon II, on the throne, regardless of what the council said, and Cregan was going to honor that. But what most likely really helped push Cregan to Rhaenyra's side was the Pact of Ice and Fire. This agreement stated in return for aiding Rhaenyra in winning her throne, a royal princess would marry into the Stark family. Side note, some people believe during these negotiations between Jace and Cregan, Jace's dragon, Vermax, left a clutch of eggs somewhere in the depths of Winterfell's crypts. However, there is no record of this. With the agreement made, Lord Roderick Dustin led a host of Northmen known as the Winter Wolves to the south to fight. These were men that feared a long winter and hoped they would be less of a burden on the north if they weren't taking up food and other resources, but fighting in the south. These Northmen would equal around 2,000 and most would die in battle begging for the honor of leading the attacks. Towards the end of the war, Cregan would finally lead his own group of homeless men, childless men, unwed men, younger sons, and old men to war. These men gathered willingly under Cregan so that their lives would be of use and spare the North another mouth to feed during the long winter. However, Cregan and his host took too long to form in March, and by the time they reached the South, Aegon II was poisoned and dead, along with Rhaenyra Targaryen. With Aegon II's death, Cregan's bannermen were denied the adventure and rewards a battle and a glorious death. Despite this, Cregan still marched his army to King's Landing, intent on punishing Storm's End, Casterly Rock, and Old Town for supporting Aegon II and not their late King Viserys I's chosen successor. But even that was robbed from Cregan, as Lord Corlys had already sent envoys to Old Town, Storm's End, and Casterly Rock suing for peace. In the six days the court waited to hear if Lord Corlys was successful or not, the realm held their breath for news of more war. During this time, known as the Hour of the Wolf, Lord Stark held sway at court. Here, Cregan found one thing they couldn't take away from him, punishing those who had poisoned and betrayed King Aegon II. As we know, the Starks in the North have a more honor-bound culture than perhaps the rest of the South do. Going to war against an unjust king in a lawful battle was okay. To murder, especially using poison, a woman's weapon, was a betrayal against the very gods who had anointed him. The 11-year-old Aegon III, Rhaenyra's living son and now King of the Iron Throne after Rhaenyra and Aegon II's death during the war, submitted to the intimidating Stark and made him his hand. A position Cregan would hold for only one day to preside over the trials and executions. 
In the end, Lord Stark arrested 22 men in Aegon III's name, including Corlys Velaryon and Laris Clubfoot. Most of these men took the black and joined the Night's Watch. However, Sir Giles Belgrave of the King's Guard chose death, not wanting to outlive his king, Aegon II. As well, Laris the Clubfoot, last of House Strong, chose death. Lord Corlys was only spared a trial and execution or taking the black by Reyna and Bela Targaryen. The two women convinced Aegon III to issue an official order to restore Corlys to his offices and honors. Of course, they also had to sweet-talk Lord Stark into this. For allowing King Aegon III's command to stand, Black Alice Blackwood agreed to marry Lord Stark. Resigning as hand the day after executions, Lord Stark would return to the North with his bride to continue his role as Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. The Maester state, No man ever held the office so briefly, and few left it as gladly. In returning North, Cregan left many of his Northmen in the South. Some of these men sold their sword, swore their swords to someone in service, wed widows in the Riverlands, or became bandits. With the hour of the wolf pass, the regents now took control over the Child King's reign. House Stark and Lord Cregan would reap many rewards for his support of King Aegon III. Though a royal princess never married into his family, as the agreement had stated, the Starks became much more loyal to the Targaryens than seen in previous years due to Cregan's assistance. The realm would see Cregan's son and heir, Rickon Stark, fight with the young dragon, King Darren I, during his conquest of Dorne. Though Cregan's son would die outside of Sunspear in one of the final battles. This death would cause the North trouble for years with the reigns of Rickon's half-brothers. Which leads us to the last part about Cregan Stark, his wives and children. Cregan's first wife before the Dance of the Dragons was Ara Nori. She would give Cregan one son, Rickon Stark, who fought and died during the conquest of Dorne. However, before Rickon's death, his mother and Cregan's wife Ara would die sometime before the conclusion of the Dance of the Dragons. How she died or exactly when she died is unknown. Then, as we know, Cregan would marry Alison Blackwood as part of the agreement to restore Lord Corlys to honors in office. Cregan and Alison Blackwood would have four daughters, Sarah, Alice, Rhea, and Maria Stark. At one point, Alison would die, leading to Cregan marrying his last wife, Lenara Stark. They had five children together in total, Janelle, Edric, Lyanna, Barthagan, and Brandon Stark. As I said before, Rickon's half-brothers would cause trouble for the North for years. The crazy intermarrying around Cregan's time is another video. However, here is a picture of their family tree. As you can see, there was a lot of fathers, half-brothers marrying their daughters, or another way of saying it, Cregan's sons marrying his grandchildren. The exact date Cregan Stark died is unknown, but it is speculated he died in 157 AC or after due to us knowing Rickon Stark was his heir and alive until 157 or 158 AC before dying outside of Sunspear. Cregan would be buried in the crypts of Winterfell upon his death and have his own statue. So that is Cregan Stark, Hand of the King for One Day, shortest office term in hand history, and a man hellbent on justice. We will have more epic Stark videos throughout the rest of the year. New Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire videos every Sunday and Wednesday. There is a new poll. I have recovered from my cold and then awful sinus infection and now want your input. We are keeping Game of Thrones A Song of Ice and Fire videos on Sunday and Wednesday with voice only and pictures. However, there is a very vocal portion of you that also wanted some in front of camera videos for Game of Thrones videos and you have given me a variety of reasons for these which I agree with and understand. These in front of camera videos would only be on off days, never affecting Sunday and Wednesday videos as a compromise. So if you like the way Sunday and Wednesday videos are, there's absolutely no change and you do not have to worry about that. However, these extra videos that are going to be in front of the camera is up to you. They could be Game of Thrones news update mini vlogs, random topics such as Essos, chapter analysis, etc. As well, I had planned on doing a chapter by chapter reread of every book with pop ups and analysis of each chapter as we go, but I'm not going to do that if people aren't interested even though I have been collecting pictures and material for that for a while. If you are interested, click the link in the video description and vote. Again, none of this affects Sunday and Wednesday videos. They will stay the same format. But I want to give something to those that wanted a little different on extra days. This won't be every week and it will be spaced out with the other extra Game of Thrones videos I need to get out. 